All right, so let's talk about prompts. So, so far we've covered menus and alerts. Now let's talk about prompts next. So let me open the script editor. If you haven't watched part one and part two, you should, so you understand what's going on here. So I'm gonna move on to creating a prompt. So this was our function to do a message box. Now let's create a prompt. So I'm gonna create a new function. I'm going to call it show input box and that will be this function that we'll use to create prompts and I'll get the UI as usual. I'm just going to copy paste and then I'll take that UI variable and I'll use this prompt. So prompt is something that gonna ask our user to enter something. So please enter your input. It's just some text for the user. Let me just actually run this so we can see what this looks like. I'm gonna assign this to our menu on top, the show input box thing. So we have this first one, the second one, and then I'll do this will be prompt. Okay, and here we'll have to do the function show input box. So now if I go here and go here and do this, I'll probably have to reload this menu. All right, let's go here again now. See, we have this prompt if I click on it. We get this and now we're expecting our user to enter something and press OK. So we basically want some entry from our user and we want to get that entry. So I'm going to create a variable here. I'm going to say input equals to this and this input will have a couple of methods attached to it. One is get response text. And the second one is get selected button. So let me just log those out so you can see what's going on. So I'll go back here and open the prompt. This will pop up. I'll type hello. I hit OK. And that's pretty much it here. Let's go and check our log. See the first one says hello and the second one says okay. And hello is the text that was entered in a box, which is this get response text. And okay is the button that was pressed. So if we go to that same box here and we run this and enter some message and this time we click on this close button instead of pressing OK. See, it will be by, that's the text, but now the button is closed. As an optional parameter here for this prompts, you can also choose different button sets. And you can do it by going to our UI and button sets and choose which button sets you want to use. So we can do OK which is currently what we had. We can also do OK and cancel. So if I do this and go back and run this prompt, see we get OK cancel. Pretty much similar to how we had alerts. If you did watch that video, see we can do yes, no, or yes, no, and cancel. Same thing. So now we can basically get multiple options. In this case, I will just use OK cancel option. Usually what you would do with this, you would just get the user to enter something and use that text as some value in some macro you run. At the same time, we also want to make sure that we only do that action when they press OK. So if they hit close or cancel, we still don't want to run anything even though they may have typed something here. So that's why we'll do an if statement here. 
very similar to our if statements on top here. So I'll do if, else if, and maybe we'll do another else if here, just in case. And I'll just add else as well. I don't think I'm going to use all of this, but I'll have them anyway. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that get selected button, which is this input that's coming from this prompt. And I'm going to see which button was selected. And I'm going to check if that button is the button that I need. So if I do UI button, so now I can check which button it is. So we have the OK button. So this means that if this passes through, that means they pressed OK. I'm going to copy paste this in my else if statements. And here, if we want to test for other buttons, we'll just do other buttons like cancel or close. And we can do different things if they press cancel or close. So I'm just going to say do something if cancel pressed. This is just a comment. For now, it's not going to do anything if close. So close would be this thing, this close button, cancel would be cancel. Okay, is this. So that is great. Else would be if it's not of those for whatever reason. So for me, mainly I'm just use this OK button because I really only want to do something if they press OK. And that's where I can just get the actual response text from the input box and use it in some way. So to do something more or less meaningful, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go here and create a new worksheet to not mess around with this. I'll call this original. And I'll just copy paste some data here. And what I'll get to do, I'll basically get this prompt box and ask the user to enter one of the salespeople. So for example, if they enter Jerry here, I'll just basically try to filter out just Jerry's results and maybe make a new tab and put just his results in this new worksheet. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, I'm going to go back here and say, please enter sales rep name or something. And what I need to do if they do press OK, I'm going to go to my spreadsheet app, get my active spreadsheet and get sheet by name. So I'll probably just do this on a separate line. Let's just get our active spreadsheet here. So our worksheet will be that spreadsheet, then get sheet by name. And the name was called original. that let me close this from here I need to get the data so I'm gonna say var data equals to I'll go to that worksheet and get range and I'll do a one notation I'll go from a2 through so we need basically this a2 through g14 so a2 through g and I'm going to get the last row to make sure that if we have less or more data, it still works. So that's that. And we're going to get values to get it to an array. Now we need to filter that array to 
things that match whatever user entered here. So I'm gonna say var user selected rep equals to, and I can get to that by taking that input, which is this input right here, and get response text. I'm gonna get rid of these logs. So that's good. That's our user selected wrap. Now we need to filter our data to that wrap. So I'm gonna say var new data equals to that new data is gonna be after we filter the data. So I'm gonna use filter and we'll do a callback function. And for each row in that data, we're gonna return. So we want to filter by this column, column number three, zero, one, two. In JavaScript, we start to count from zero. So that's really two, so R two. So I want only when it equals to that user selected wrap. So that should filter this data and return everything filtered to that wrap. Now we have our new data. Now we're gonna take our new data and put it on a new spreadsheet. So to do that, we're gonna create that new spreadsheet. So we're gonna do it by going to this SS, our own spreadsheet. We need to add actually a worksheet, not a spreadsheet. Insert sheet. I guess that's it. And we can apparently see do the name string. So that's good. Maybe we'll call that. Actually, I'll just call it that user selected thing. So we'll just name it like the name of the tab, whatever user entered in that input box, return a new worksheet. And in that new worksheet, we need to basically put our data. So we're gonna get range and we're gonna put that starting from the second row because the first row is gonna be our headers. So the first column, the number of rows is gonna be the number of rows we have in our new, new data, not new worksheet, dot length. And the number of columns will be the number of columns we have in that data again. So we can do it by getting the first row and counting how many columns we have there. So that's that. And we're gonna set values to our new data. Something like this. I'm gonna save it. So that's gonna add a new tab. We're gonna do all of this run this and see what happens. I'll probably have to give some permissions here if we didn't use any of this before. We'll find out in a second, I guess. So I'm gonna go here and click prompt. I'm gonna type Jerry. If I click cancel, nothing should happen. Now let me try this again. I'm gonna type Jerry and press okay. And now see we have a new tab called Jerry and it filtered this data to just Jerry's results. We should probably put the header names here too in addition to just the data. So I'm gonna go and add that. And while I'm on it, I'm gonna fix another thing. So right now that worked just fine. However, if I type lowercase Jerry, this is most likely not gonna work. See? It's trying to make the tab, but there are no results because it's not matching Jerry because it's case sensitive. So I wanna make sure I grab lowercase and uppercase Jerry's no matter how we type it. So I'll go back and first let me fix that lowercase uppercase situation. So we can do that by simply just making sure we convert this user's response to lowercase. This will now have that response user selected wrap in lowercase no matter how we type it. 
And then when I'm filtering, I will take whatever's in that third row and convert it to lowercase and then see if that matches my lowercase text, which should basically make not case sensitive text. Finally, let's also make sure we copy headers. So all I have to do, I have this new worksheet and I have this original worksheet. I have to just copy this from A1 through G1 to my new worksheet. So I'll take that worksheet and I'll get range. And the range was from A1 through G1, the first header labels. And we'll copy to our range destination. So the range destination is going to be coming from this new worksheet. And from that new worksheet, we'll get range, which will be really the same range because we're copying the same headers. So that. That should take care of it, I believe. I'm gonna go and test this, save this first, go back here, my macros, prompt. I'm gonna do lowercase jerry to see what happens, press okay. Good, we got all Jerry's results with the header names. Let me try this again. I'm gonna go here and do the prompt and try to do John. So now we have John, just one record. Is that correct? Yes, that seems to be correct. Uh, is there anybody who has more than one record here? Let me just make a few by doing this Steven. So I'll go here and do a prompt and we'll do Steven. Hit okay. There we go. So that's pretty much it. So this should give you an idea how we can use prompts. So basically we get something that gets our user to enter some entry, then we use their entry in some code going forward. One other thing I want to mention is that this prompt, see right now it has this design where it says, please enter sales rep name. Now you could also have a title here on top so let me show you how that works. So what do you do? You just go here and add another argument and say your entry expected. If I save this, go back and do the prompt. See now it has this title on top and this text below. So it's just more like design thing. You can do that too. By the way, you can also do this for alerts. When I was doing alerts, I forgot to show you this. So see, if I have this show message alert, I can also add an extra argument here and say, please confirm or something like that. It doesn't matter. You'll figure out what text to use. But now if I do the message, see it says that title on top and then the second text shows below. And that's it. So that's how we can do alert boxes and prompts. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.